about that time of week to give you another 2015 NFL Mock Draft installment. I've been pretty consistent with this stuff. Uh, it's another one-round mock. All 32 picks of the first round are in the description box down below. As always, the pick order is determined based off of teams' records, to the best of my knowledge, in terms of strength schedule. If they have the same record, I just kind of put them in a certain spot. It doesn't really matter at this point in time. Uh, so if your team's picking in a certain spot, don't get pissed at me. Don't get pissed at anybody else but your team for their current level of suckage, let's say. Um, <clears throat> so this particular mock draft, as always, I try to play out different scenarios, especially this early in the process. Um, and in this particular scenario, I'm playing out three quarterbacks going high in the first 13 picks. Um, so that kind of shakes up the board quite a bit. I'm also playing out some players potentially dropping, and usually I'm pretty good for those that I see in the comments saying that my mocks aren't good or that this isn't good or that isn't good. Usually I'm pretty good about predicting what players might drop and or rise. Um, so not perfect, obviously. I don't think anybody in the mock drafting community uh, would be perfect, but my record on that is not exactly terrible either. I'm just saying... All right, so now, talking about this mock draft, and of course, i got to start off with number one, which of course is still the Oakland Raiders, the only winless team in the National Football League, now as they sit at 0-8. And, and I've continued to consistently mock a quarterback there number one overall. I have tried to explain to so many of you, and some of you who are just playing dunderheads, that this apparently isn't sinking through, so I will try to get it through your heads again. This is somewhat similar to me of the situation in 2010 where the Panthers took Jimmy Clausen in the second round. They had a horrible season. Clausen was bad. They ended up with the number one overall pick, and they took Cam Newton, and their organization is a whole lot better off for it. I'm not saying that Derek Carr has been Jimmy Clausen bad. Au contraire, Derek Carr has been okay. But when I see people say that Derek Carr has been really, really good or that he's really shown you he could be the franchise guy, Two things. Number one, bullshit. Number two, he doesn't even have the talent around him to show that. Now, some of you will sit there and say, well, that means you get the talent around him. Maybe he could. Maybe he could. But maybe he couldn't. Again, we have to be realistic here. Would a new general manager, potentially, and a new head coach that we more likely not know is coming, want to tie themselves to the second-round quarterback selection of a previously failed regime. We have to be realistic about this, people. And I will put this in a different set of terms. Okay, let's say I'm a Bears fan. My Chicago Bears have Matt Forte, one of the best all-around running backs in the National Football League. I love Matt Forte. He's my favorite Bear player currently, not named uh, Peanut Tillman. You know, he's not active because of injury, da-da-da. Okay. But let's say a player the caliber of an Adrian Peterson, and ignoring the off-the-field crap, but you know and believe that Adrian Peterson coming out of Oklahoma is going to be the Adrian Peterson that he became in the NFL. Am I not going to take Adrian Peterson because I already have Matt Forte? No, that's fucking stupid, because Adrian Peterson would be an upgrade over Matt Forte, period. As a result, I would feel like I'm taking the best available player, and I figure out the rest later. Would you pass on Adrian Peterson because you already have Matt Forte? I don't fucking think so. That would be like sitting there and let's say you could only start one wide receiver. And let's say you had Michael Urban already. Great wide receiver. Hall of Famer. But let's say you had the opportunity to draft Jerry Rice. And you know Jerry Rice is going to be Jerry Rice. Are you going to pass on Jerry Rice because you already have Michael Urban? No, and if you do, you're either a really dyed-in-the-wool uh, cowboy fan or you're a moron. Let's be realistic. The way I look at it is very simple. If you're not a championship contending team, potentially every single player is replaceable. It's that simple. But in this scenario, I decided to change it up a little bit because I got tired of people bitching about Mariota being number one. So I said, fuck you, I'm going to put Jameis Winston number one, and let's see what happens. Still got Mariota going number three to the Jets. All this talk about him not playing in a 
pro style system and this and that and everything else. So, just, you know, like I said, I've still got a lot of evaluation to do on Winston and Mariota. So my whole process has um, not finished yet. Uh, but again, as I've mentioned before, I believe I posted about it on Twitter. Um, if Marcus Mariota is a system quarterback, what does that make Jameis Winston? Both players have a tremendous skill sets that should translate well to the NFL. I don't dispute that. But I do dispute that Mariota alone is a system quarterback. When Winston comes from a school that, after all those years of never producing a first-round pick at quarterback under Bobby Bowden, they've produced Christian Ponder, bust. E.J. Manuel, bust. Just saying. It's kind of true. Now, in terms of some of the other things that you'll notice on this board, you'll see a big move up for Shane Ray, the outside linebacker from Missouri, working into the top five. He's the type of guy that if he's a workout warrior, he's going to fly up draft board, similar to like Leonard Floyd, who in this case, he dropped to 17 for me just because of the way the board uh, shook up. Now, I've got a lot of people, I think, commenting on Amari Cooper. There's no way he drops out of the top 10. Who's to say he's even a top 10 talent right now in a lot of teams' eyes? You know, I'm looking at it right now. I've still got Kevin White going number one, number nine, excuse me, to St. Louis. I've got Cooper going number 14 to San Francisco. Although I will say if somehow Amari Cooper was there at number 14 to San Francisco and they didn't draft him at that position, then they are fucking clowns indeed. Uh, you'll see Todd Gurley, number six to Atlanta. I believe I've touched on this before, but I will touch on it again. This is kind of the DeMarco Murray effect in a way. Atlanta could sit there and fire Mike Smith, which I'm sure they'll do, and focus on defense in another draft and get it wrong, which I'm sure is what they'll do. Or what they could do is they could build around their franchise quarterback, protect their franchise quarterback, while also helping their defense out at the same time and getting that big-time running back that they have sorely lacked for years. It's what led to them bringing in the old and semi-washed-up Steven Jackson, you know, they didn't draft guys like Eddie Lacy when they fucking should have. Like I said, they should have. Todd Gurley fixes an awful lot of that. Uh, I've got my Bears taking Shaq Thompson, the outside linebacker from Washington at number eight. I love this kid. I love what he brings to the table. And as bad as the Bears' safety position is, and it's terrible, I think their linebackers are perhaps even worse, and they don't nearly get the amount of heat and shit thrown upon them that they deserve. Uh, some other guys I have rising up the board a little bit. I've got Dante Fowler breaking into the top 10 with the Giants. Uh, Connor Cook going 13 to the Houston Texans. You know, they, they, they've got to know that they've got to bring in a quarterback. Even though at this point in time, I wouldn't be surprised if the Texans brought in uh, Brian Hoyer via free agency in the offseason to work under uh, Bill O'Brien. You know, Patriot connection, Belichick connection, there you go. Uh, but in this scenario, I'm assuming they don't, so they have to get a quarterback, and they have to. Um, some other players I'm looking at here, I've got Melvin Gordon going 18 to Miami. I've got uh, Trey Waynes moving up to 24 to Pittsburgh. I've got Alvin Dupree going up to number 26 to Dallas. Um, some other players that have got dropping. Now, I've been pretty steady about Randy Gregory. I think personally he's an overrated prospect based off of what I've seen at this point in time. And I think when the draft process can, goes on and these other outside linebackers uh, show themselves to be more explosive and show bigger upside. A guy like Randy Gregory, Shalit Calhoun, uh, those guys could drop because there could be questions about what position they'll translate to at the NFL level. And they could end up being a really nice steal in the late first round, early to mid second round for a team. Um, in terms of other players I've got dropping, I'm looking to see here if I've got anybody else that really dropped. You know, Vic Beasley, there's going to be concerns about him, whether or not he really is big enough to play outside linebacker in a 3-4. If Teams don't think he can. He's not going to play defensive end in a 4-3 more likely than not. So how high of a pick do you want to spend on a 4-3 strong side linebacker? Now, if you get a guy with the explosive pass rushing ability of like a Von Miller, who I said a few years ago was a bad choice for the Broncos, and I, of course, have been proven to be dead wrong about that, um, you know, you got to entertain it. But in this scenario, Vic Beasley is a really good value pick, I think, for the New Orleans Saints at 21. In terms of what you see in this draft, you see a lot of edge rushers. It's a very good draft for edge rushers. I think this is an incredibly good draft for running back talent at the top portion of the draft and all throughout. Quarterback class, still a lot to be decided. A lot of talent, but a lot of question marks. So feel free, check out my most recent mock draft in the description box down below and let me know what you think of it yes 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 if you're a Raiders fan you believe they shouldn't take Derek Carr 
please bombard me with your hatred already and get it over with. It'll help you feel better, I'm sure.